Hello everyone, it's 10types, and today I figured this would be a really useful video to make, and it's a bit of a tutorial, I guess, on how to beat Snorlax, Snorlax Control, Snorlax Stall, Snorlax Mill, whatever. Um, I described it as Snorlax Control, and this works against Pidgeot Control as well. Uh, this will not work against Great Tusk Mill. You will probably lose if you try some of these strategies. But um, yeah, this is how to beat Snorlax, and this is a pretty normal list. This is the top one on Play Limitless. I will be looking at the top list for each deck on Play Limitless unless they look super weird. Uh, and so I'm going to be going over the top 10 decks as well. So if you're playing Gardevoir or Goldengo or um, like Pajet Control or uh, Algmatang or whatever, uh, sorry. But for most decks, you will. Um, yeah, I'll give you a guide on how to beat Control and uh, tips. Some matchups are harder than others. And outside of that also... Um, the tips will be a applicable to many matchups, not just uh, many decks against control. Also, if you're a control player, I will be teaching you about the mirror some, but also more importantly, I will be, uh, these will be things that you want to look for your opponent and you want to be trying to stop them from happening. So let's look at the cards that we got here in control. Uh, obviously, you have Snorlax, and sometimes this is replaced with Mawile as well. And so, pretty much, it stops your opponent's active for Pokemon from retreating. And so, the main idea is to trap a Pokemon in the active that cannot attack. However, there are some other ways to win games, I guess. Um, it's mostly that. You also have <clears throat> Mimikyu. Sorry, my voice is not 100% today, as I've been recording a little while. But uh, Mimikyu here, its ability safeguard means it's immune to EXs and Vs. And so. Uh, it cannot attack usually, though, so keep that in mind, I guess. Don't be scared of it, just... Don't be scared of it attacking you. Be scared of it uh, walling you, though. And so make sure you play a deck that actually has some way to attack it. And uh, we do see Defiance Vest. So Defiance Vest here means you take 40 less. It's most useful on Mimikyu. Um, or I guess it could be playing Snorlax. So if you have a Pokemon that is only hitting 40 damage or less, then that's not enough. That's not enough damage because Defiance Vest will trigger. Also, they have Chiyu to mill you two cards, so if you're trying to, um, if you're wondering, like, oh, I need to Iono to buy myself a little extra time, make sure you Iono, uh, don't end your turn with two cards in deck is what I'm saying, or they have Misfortune Sisters as well, which will mill items, so if you know you have items in your deck, make sure you have at least um, three cards in your deck that aren't items, um, I suppose your deck could be like 10 items, and that's fine. But anyway, so make sure your deck's big enough so you're not just going to lose. Uh, of course, if they are doing Misfortune Sisters, you know, there, there's lots of stuff going on. But anyways, uh, outside of that, Pidgeot V will stop them from decking out. This is commonly played, but not always played. Uh, they have Resource Recovery with Silene, Team Bale's Cheer, and Pal Pad. But really big, but that sounded weird. A really big, like, thing you need to keep in mind, if they're, if they're playing weird... That might be because they prize something, and they can't get anything out of their prizes essentially ever. Um, it does depend on the list. Some can, I'd say. I mean, this list technically can. They can start attacking you with Chi Yu EX, but that's not very good. And um, they probably can't. Realistically, it's actually hard to do. But outside of that, um, yeah, if they prize something, they don't know where it is in their prizes. So they're going to start playing kind of weirdly. If you notice that they start playing slower, as in they're like, they stop Rotom Ving. Or they, um, I don't know, you just know some doing something kind of weird. That's probably because they prized, like, Silene or Team Bell's Cheer. And um, if they prize Silene, keep that in mind. Also, not all this from Mantine. Uh, so, Eric's Invitation grabs Pokemon from your hand, drags them to play. So, um, obviously, don't play Pokemon. I guess I, this is the number one thing. Don't play Pokemon you can't attack with or that aren't good attackers. Uh, with Mimikyu, though, you want to keep in mind um, that... Uh, Sorry, with Mantine, you want to keep in mind that that'll get them from your discard, but not all lists run it. Uh, it used to be, I don't know, I'd say around half do. I'm not sure on that number, but keep in mind they might have it, but they most certainly have Erika's Invitation. Um, yeah, and so they don't know what's in your hand unless they use Airy. Airy will discard items from your hand, um, so don't keep items in your hand that you need that... Like, if you, you have a switch to take a knockout, take the knockout now and don't wait to get Airied or Misfortune Sisted. Um, I, I don't really see that. Like, I don't ever see people wait. But yeah, make sure you play your items if you need them so you don't have them getting discarded before you can use them. Uh, outside of that, though, if they air you and they see that you have a basic in your hand, now that's probably the best time to get it out of there into the discard, preferably. Or, I mean, into your deck, preferably, but that you can't really do that, most likely. Um, but you can super rod Pokemon out of your discard so that they can't be put into play with Mantine. Also, with Mantine, keep in mind that... um. 
it's an attack, right? So they can't guess you up that turn. Uh, I guess in terms of attacks as well, one tech that you can put in to any deck, the best tech, in my opinion, to beat this deck is going to be Professor Terror's Scenario. Professor, or, okay, Penny as well if you're running an all-basic deck. But if you're not an all-basic deck, Professor Terror's Scenario, uh, your opponent can't really mill it. They can mill items and very easily discard items. So some people are like, yeah, put in lots of pal pads, but they might just get discarded. So that's kind of a bit of a risk. Same thing with switches. Switches might just get discarded. The best thing, in my opinion, is to put in Professor Terror's Scenario and Team Yells here. If you put those in, you're probably just going to win the game. Um, so yeah, that's the, the number one tech option. Uh, they do a boss and counter catcher. Sometimes they have Crushing Hammer, though they don't always have energy removal. Um, I honestly haven't seen it too much, but I know it is out there where this list runs it. And they do have Giacomo, or I don't, Yakimo? It's not Yakimo. I always think it's... I don't remember how to say this. I honestly don't really care. But um, what it does do is it discards special energy from different Pokemon. So try not to spread them out unless you have to. Um, it's not... The deck's not very good against Lugia. Uh, Lugia kind of kicks this deck. Let me let me find the matchup here. Uh, it's very advantageous to Lugia. So don't, yeah, Lugia probably wins. Um, outside of that, not too much to say. Uh, they, they do have like... Oh, Temple of Sinnoh. Yeah, that like hurts Lugia, I guess. It hurts Lost Zone as well. And this deck, I'll look at the matchup spread. I'm not super familiar with it. Uh, I mean, I'm familiar with a good chunk, but not all of them. Uh, the deck is bad against um, Lugia. It's bad against Lost Zone. And um, apparently Arceus Giratina as well. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. Uh, I feel like that is a winnable matchup. But yeah, and outside of that, um, oh, I, I don't think Snorlax's great test matchup is amazing. There's different things there. Um, I will say Snorlax, a lot of people who play Control, especially more complicated builds of Control, are very familiar with Control. Like, I've played a lot of Control, so that means that they probably have a better idea of what they're doing in the matchup versus someone playing a more simpler deck. Just in general, I mean, if someone's playing a more complicated deck, they're probably better, or they're just going to lose. But if they're just going to lose, then they're going to lose. It doesn't really matter what you do. Um, but yeah, so keep in mind, there are probably some nuances. So if you think that they're setting you up for a trap, they probably are. Um... Yeah, anyway. Oh, Hero's Cape, obviously they only run one copy of, so Lost Vacuuming, that can be very good. Uh, and they do a Penny, so they can heal. Penny scoops a Pokemon, a basic Pokemon from play into their hand. This is the stall aspect of Stonex stall. And um, what it does is it will heal them, right? So keep that in mind. Don't bank them not having Penny, because they probably will. Um, so let's just hop into Charizard. Charizard is kind of weird. There are some different techs. Um... I'm going to pull up some different lists, but a regular list looks something like this. Um, yeah, but this is not going to be Snorlax. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Um, but what can you attack with? Let's start with that. You can attack with Charmeleon, or, so anything in the Charizard line. Uh, the Charmeleon just don't hit enough, but you can attack with them. Uh, and Pidgeot as well. You can attack with Pidgeot. Uh, keep in mind, if they team Devolution you, they probably won't, but if they do, that could be an issue. Uh, so don't, like... I don't know. It makes you have, like, rare candies, I guess. They, they might get discarded. Um, but Charmeleon's nice, right? Uh, and then, and, oh, Mimikyu, right? Mimikyu is scary, but just Charmeleon. Charmeleon is actually immune to Mimikyu's attack, even. So even if they can attack you, Charmeleon will just cut straight through that. Um, you can retreat if you have to deal with Mimikyu as well. So don't be too worried about that, because you do have some energy recovery, but, you know, kind of be aware of that. Uh, the, the big thing, though, is obviously don't play Rotom, don't play Manaphy, and don't play Luminion, and probably don't play Radiant Charizard either. Radiant Charizard is pretty bad. Does energy, its attack cost is 5 energy, so even if you can attack with the Radiant Charizard, you literally only have 2 energy left in the best-case scenario, because five or 7 energy is super normal in Charizard. So if you're running 7 energy, you have 5 on Radiant Charizard, then you can put 2 on like a Charizard or something, and then that's it. So then you're kind of screwed. So make sure you um, don't play Radiant Charizard. Luminion V, Rotom V, Manaphy, uh, add like ever. Do that, avoid that as best as possible. Uh, outside of that, it's kind of hard. There are some texts you can put in. I want to see if I can find one. Uh, I saw some list running the tech, but I, I don't know where it is. Oh, this one <laughs> list runs Fluttermane. Fluttermane actually doesn't get trapped. Uh, that's not, the one list ran Fluttermane. Here we go. Fluttermane, it does not get trapped by Snorlax, so that's a fun little thing to note as well. But I thought there were more lists that ran it. What am I looking at? Um, well, that's not. I'm talking about. I'm talking about. Um, Gengar. Gengar will stop you from getting trapped. This list runs Chiyu. You actually can use that to mill in certain scenarios. Um, 
But yeah, you can put in Gengar. So Gengar from uh, Paldean Fates, I guess. Is it only from Paldean Fates? Uh, yeah, looks like it is. So Gengar from Paldean Fates um, says once during a turn, you can just switch. Um, and so this is a switch every turn. It's obviously not millable. It's in play. Um, of course, your very candies are millable. So keep that in mind. But getting Gengar will just let you win the game. But you need to get it into play. Well, okay, and you need energy. You you're not gonna run out of energy. You just need one Pokemon with energy, so maybe two. Uh, so yeah, Gengar. Uh, make sure you have that going. Uh, if you get this, this is really nice. But also, obviously, it's kind of useless in every other matchup. So a lot of people aren't running it. A lot of lists were running it earlier on though. So it's kind of interesting. You could run Midyar as well. Um, I mean, the best tech against control. If you have slots for it, it's just, as I said, Professor Toe's scenario plus um, TBL's cheer, and you won't lose the game. I mean, you just won't lose. Um, but Gengar is obviously, you know, it, it's pretty useful, but it is a stage two, and it's kind of awkward. So, I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of it. The matchup's pretty bad, to be honest. Um, but make sure you don't bench Manaphy, Rotom V, Luminion V, and or Radiant Charizard, like, ever. They're always bad. Um... You could try to fill your benches with Charmanders and Pidgeys as well. That is an option. Uh, you can't power up all your attackers. That's just something you need to keep in mind. Uh, so, yeah, you can't power up. Um, you can't power up three Charizards and two Pidgeots. You that's ten energy. You only have seven. But your opponent will be like gusting around it. You'll be in a better spot. So you could try to fill your bench. That's kind of awkward, um, as that is all your Charmanders and Pidgeys. So if any of them are prized, you can't do that. Uh, and yeah, don't overextend. Obviously, don't like. Don't play Luminion V. Don't be like, yeah, I'm gonna, I need to get this KO. I'm going to take play Luminion V to take the first prize. Don't do that. I've seen people do that. That's, like, really bad. You're going to lose if you do that. Um, yeah. And also, if you notice, your opponent might be playing Rotom, like, might be playing Control. So if they start Rotom V, probably don't play a Rotom V of your own because there is a decent check of Control. Except you have this deck called Future Hand. Um, so it's, like, Future Box or whatever. It's the same the same concept as concepts for future box um yeah quite frankly in this matchup you just want to go as fast as you can um well there no there are two ways to do it actually there is one go as fast as you can but keep in mind you don't have it you have very little switch you just have prime catcher and you then you also have boss so um if they're running mawile like if so if they're running pidgeot um maybe don't go as fast but if they're definitely not running pidgeot you're pretty sure they're not um just go go at them and you can win before they're able to set up but keep in mind what can they trap they can trap iron crown ex potentially something else but probably iron crown ex so the solution is to play psychic energy as well uh this is a great tech in the list you don't need psychic energy obviously it hurts your odds of electric generator but psychic energy will help out a lot now this list you can literally attack with every pokemon um Snorlax, how much health does, or how much damage does it do? Yeah, okay. Oh, it does the same amount of damage as it has health. So you can attack with Mew EX. Um, you won't necessarily take a one shot, but you don't need to be taking one shots. All these Pokemon hit decent chunks of damage. As I said, as long as you're hitting at least 40, that's fine. The only Pokemon that's close to hitting 40 would be Iron Crown EX, but it also hits through effects, so that doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, this list should be control, like every time. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. There's not too much to say about it. Don't, like, don't put, like, five energy on, like, Iron Hands or something. I don't know why you'd ever do that, but don't do that. Um, yeah, the, the stack, like, is pretty good against control. I don't know why the win rate's low, honestly. Uh, if someone knows... Oh, it's actually... No, that's not the right this. It's, um... Yeah, I don't know why it's, like, losing to it. Uh, okay, no, I know why it's losing. If you're not running Psychic Energy... And you're not running any switch other than Prime Catcher, then just don't play Iron Crown. You need to make sure you don't play Iron Crown if you're not doing those things, um, and then you can win. You don't need to take the knockouts. Just play it slower. Um, yeah. Or if they're getting off to a bad start, you can just go really fast. Those are your two options. Uh, I've seen people like switch between them. Uh, that that doesn't work, right? It um, you need to commit. You need to either commit to playing slow, or commit to playing playing fast, um, and you should be okay. Uh, and then if you're control, obviously, um, yeah, there's not really too much you can do if they're in psychic energies other than like penny loop and you can mill them. Uh, so don't like professor's research probably if you're playing this stack, if you can avoid it and Iona's could be useful to buy some time. Uh, next up we have Chimpowbex Caliber. Uh, this matchup's really weird. It's kind of hard. 
It's really complicated on both sides. This list actually runs Minior. I, I literally have no idea why this list runs Minior. It might be for control. Um, I guess it won them a game, but I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I would run... What are these lists? I want to like just see a regular list. Okay, this is a pretty normal list. Um, this list isn't like crazy or anything, but this is a little more normal in my opinion. So the idea is, um, one, don't play Barrel if you can avoid it. Barrel is not... I mean, it can attack, but it's not very good. First of all, it needs three energy to attack, two energy to retreat. It doesn't hit very much. It hits 100 on a coin flip. So, um, yeah, it's not great. Uh, Iron Bundle, same thing. I mean, it's okay, right? And, um, Chimp Out is an actually good attacker. The best attacker is going to be Bax Caliber. I mean, Chimp Out can be good to push, and then Iron Hands, obviously, to take extra prizes. One thing, uh, some lists run the Bufalon, which can loss on you. So, uh, loss on energy. So, um, if they're doing that, don't Iron Hands, because they're going to loss on your singular Lightning Energy. You do run one Prime Catcher, so if you need to switch, that can be useful. Uh, obviously, don't put it on top. I didn't say this. Cypher Maniacs, Code Breaking, as well as Silene, put cards on top of your deck. Don't put Prime Catcher on top of your deck, and then just leave it there. It Make sure you draw it if you put it on top of your deck, because if they see you Cypher Maniacs, Code Breaking, and then just pass, they're going to miss Fortune Sisters and just discard the Prime Catcher. So make sure you do that. Um... Outside of that, Radiant Cringe is not amazing because it does discard energy and your opponent might mill your superior energy retrievals. So mostly go back to Calibar. You could go Chimp How. It's not terrible. Um, uh, one thing you want to be careful of, though, is... Um, and this, in some sense, you do want to go Chimp How. I guess that was like... Yeah, so probably go Chimp How um, early game. Or just put one back to Calibar into play. Um, so if you can only, if you can like have a small bench, just th then you can attack with back to Calibar. Chin Pao, um, obviously discards the energy, Bex Calibur obviously doesn't. So the what the control player will try to do, and if you're playing control, this is what you should try to do. You gust up of a barrel or a Bex Calibur. They accelerate three energy to it. They attack, they knock you out or whatever. But that's okay, hopefully, unless you just lose. Um, but so then you boss up another Bex Calibur or a barrel, and you do that a bunch of times until all their energy are trapped in play. So if you're playing against control, keep in mind... Once your energy is on a Pokemon, it's on that Pokemon. Your opponent's never going to knock it out because that only helps you. So don't overcommit energies um, and be very careful. And you have lots of ways to recover energy. You have three rod in this list. I think two rods. Okay, maybe three rod is common. I don't play Champ Pao. Um, but if you have three rod and four spear energy retrieval, then put them on Champ Pao. Don't be worried too much about discarding them. Uh, obviously, keep track of how many rods and superior energy retrievals you have left, uh, and don't just like poke stop all the time either. I probably wouldn't, uh, unless they're off to a bad start. But even then, I probably wouldn't because give me on poke stop, then they might get out of it. But yeah, I mean, just just do your uh, champion things. But um, yeah, try not to overcommit energies and keep keep in mind that that's what they're trying to do. The matchup's a little... It's really complicated. It's a really fun matchup, in my opinion, for both sides. It's actually really co is it complicated. Lots of things going on. But keep that in mind. Um, d probably don't read Inku Ninja. It's not great, unless you can win the game by sniping stuff, or if they're running Pidgeot, KO their Pidgey, or whatever, then that's good. But, you know. The rest of the time, probably don't do that. And Iron Hands is not amazing. Unless um, you're really pushing early and they're not off to a great start. Uh, let's see, next matchup, we got ourselves, uh, Lugia Archaeops, uh, I mean, uh, there's not too much to say here, uh, Lugia Archaeops is really good against it, um, in terms of, like, cards you want, you want Jet Energy, it's a switch, it's really good, um, there are other things, but I mean, it's not an issue, it's a really easy matchup, um, you might they do have Giacomo, as I said, to discard your special energies, so don't, like, spread them out just for the sake of spreading them out, uh, Mist Energy can be useful in certain scenarios, they do have Templacino, though, but all your Pokemon can attack, so... Yeah, I mean, if they send a Bimikyu, you could just retreat um, into whatever you need to, if they, you know, whatever. Um, obviously, like, Lugia is a bit of an inconsistent deck. It's not my favorite deck to play. So you could always just, like, lose, because you just don't set up at all. Um, but even then, they give you a lot of time, so you should be fine. Uh, Chinchino is good. Uh, make sure... Uh, they might try to knock out your Chichino. That is the thing that some control decks will try to do. So, honestly, having a backup's fine. Uh, but don't accelerate loss of energy to it either. Maybe, like, two energy. Just get two energy on your Chichino. If you need more, send more on it. Um, 
do get our gaps into play. Uh, I could see an argument for not. And then don't play Luminion. Just don't. Uh, that'll be not great. If you play Luminion, that could be really bad. Uh, but as I said, assuming they're running Snorlax and not Ball Wild, you can gust around their Snorlax, gust up something else, and retreat your, your Luminion. Uh, save your Collapse Stadium if you can as well, because Collapse Stadium will be useful to bump their Temple of if they're running that in a very in like a more traditional list, which is very common. So but yeah, you like get the Luminion out, um, but just don't play it if you can avoid it. It's completely fine to wait some extra turns and honestly fill up your bench with like Minchinos and Snorlax and Lugia so that it won't get stuck. You got a lot of energy in the list. How many? Like 17. So I wouldn't worry too much, um, but try not to spread out your energy as well if you can avoid that. It's a pretty easy matchup, to be honest. If, if for attacks, you could honestly chuck another collapsed. I mean, I feel like a second collapsed in Lugia is nice anyways, in my opinion. But um, yeah, if you're running a list like this, um, probably don't play Mew and like don't play Luxray. I can't imagine you're ever going to get the chance to play Luxray, but if you can, still don't. Um, yeah, that's about it, though. For Lugia, Lugia it just kind of cooks control. It's, it's a really good matchup for control. Um Lost Zone, again, pretty good matchup. And I'll talk about Lost Zone and Lost Zone Giratina, like Lost Zone Box and Lost Zone Giratina. Uh, they're pretty much the same deck. One thing, Spiritomb is super great to stop a Rotom V. So if they're not a uh, Pidgeot build, then Spiritomb is so good. Even if they are, I mean, it's, Spiritomb's not that bad. It's never going to get stuck because it can just get out of play. Uh, outside of that, obviously don't Lost Zone for things that you need. Um, that's kind of out of your control at some points, but don't push too hard. Uh, don't like go all out to get big knockouts. Some listen to Luminion, like don't play Luminion. Um, yeah, but don't over. I don't know. I feel like more switches would be nice, but um, yeah, keep your switches handy in case you need them, and uh, just attack. I mean, pretty much what you do is you just attack them over and over. Don't loss zone all your energies with Giratina V Star as well. Oh, I guess a really nice uh, tip is attack with Giratina V, not Giratina V Star. It's really good. Um, Giratina V Star is kind of mediocre. Star Requiem, uh, Requiem, uh, Templacina will stop Mist Energy, but that's only like a one turn thing. So they might just Mist Energy and stop you. Maybe not. I don't know, but it is possible. Uh, and Lost Impact just isn't very good, especially if they're running Bufalon or certain other things. But um, yeah, just shred. Shred over and over and over again, and you'll win if you just do that. Um, and keep in mind, you do have switches. Uh, Iono as well. Some lists run Iono. This list does, and that can be useful. Um, you uh, just like do loss on stuff, and you should be okay. I personally run higher counts of switch and loss on as well. I'm not gonna lie, I usually run um, eight switch because switch is really, really good. But um, yeah, so like a regular basic loss zone. Um, again, you could don't overcommit your energies. Like in this list, you could technically like put energies, you could put like your lightning energies on your boring moon or something. It's like silly like that. No, all of a sudden you can't attack with Iron Hands, so that's like not something you want to do. Um, yeah, probably don't attack with Rainic Greninja, but I mean just do Lost and stuff, and you should win because you got a lot of Switch cards. Um, try not to run out, but yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, pretty much you just do Lost and stuff. Lost is pretty good against Control. Uh, there's not too much they can do. Kind of keep an eye on what they're doing though. Don't you leave yourself vulnerable to some certain Pokemon getting trapped. Notably Comfy. Comfy get, can get trapped in the active at times. You're not going to not play Comfy, though. I mean, you could try, but I can't really see. I mean, if you start, start Giratina V is good if you know you're against Control. Because you can just Abyss Seeking. And honestly, that's good. Because then you can Lost Zone your Comfies. And then you're, they're never going to get trapped because they're in the Lost Zone. Uh, Cramorant doesn't necessarily do enough as well. So keep that in mind. Um, and say, like, you know, gets swallowed by Mist Energy. There's some nuances, but, you know, just kind of kind of do your thing, and you, you should be all right. And as I said, Spiritomb is good against Rotom. And Pidgeot, it'll stop them from Pidgeot Ving. They're um, using that. It doesn't stop Forest Hailstone as well. Next, Arceus Giratina. Apparently, this deck's really good against Control. I think, I guess it's a bit of an underrated deck. I don't respect it too much. Um, it's not insane against Control, but, um, yeah, pretty much don't put your barrels into play. Don't lost impact a lot. Don't put Radiant Guard into play. Um, but I mean, you can attack with all your guys, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, I probably wouldn't Aerodactyl V Star either. That doesn't seem good to mill yourself three into the lost one every turn. I, I can't imagine that goes well. Um, 
Sharon's care, if you can bait them into damaging you, that, that could be nice. Um, and kind of like keep energies in play. I, I feel like this matchup's kind of sketchy. Uh, don't put Squovit in play. Oh, well, actually, no. Sorry. That is something I honestly completely forgot about Squovit. Um, so Squovit will stop you from decking out if they aren't playing Chiyo. Um, so yeah, you can Squovit to stop yourself from decking out. Um, don't do it like too much. You don't want to never have cards in your hand. Um, I, I made a video where I I said like I played a two under turn game. It was because the my opponent scored it. Um, it's not gonna win you the game. It's just gonna not you, lose you the game. But uh, it will like buy you lots of time, literally infinite time, unless they have milling options, which they pr might. Um, yeah, I mean just attack. Uh, don't don't overextend, and yeah, just kind of do your thing. Uh, and try not to bench for Bale Scovit if you can avoid it. Um, pretty normal control stuff. Um, no, nothing too crazy in this matchup. I mean, there is obviously like nuance within the, each game. But uh, yeah, do your thing. In the mirror, I guess we got now. Now let's see the list. Um, this, this is interesting. The number one thing. Well, there's a, there's a certain text you can play. My opinion, I like Daisy's help and um, uh, Arc Phone as well. You don't need Arc Phone, but I'd run Arc Phone. Um, in control, some people, whenever they see a control mirror, they just start attacking. Like, that's not good. Uh, there are times when it's good. Um, but not in this control mirror. That that will not end well. You don't want to give your opponent access to counter catcher, right? Um, pretty much the main thing is you just go ahead and chi EX a bunch of times. And if you can do that, that's how you win. Uh, potentially, if you run Luxor V, you can do that. But a lot of lists, like these more straightforward lists, don't. Uh, you could try to trap something for your opponents. You can try to miss Fortune Sisters. The matchup's kind of weird. In a list like in lists like this, a mirror is kind of probably gonna suck, to be honest. Uh, is there's gonna be a lot of like weird, complicated things. It's also kind of random. Uh, if you prize to you, that's or like your energy, that's bad. Um, then you probably lose. And yeah, I mean, just try to mill your opponent's pal pads. Um, and don't prize Silent and Team Yellow Steer. If you do that, it won't be so good. Uh, outside of that, um, you could try to trap Pidgeot V in the active as well. If you do that, then they can't loop it um, to stop them from decking out. And uh, you do have Penny. Obviously, keep in mind, Penny will, you know, counter Snorlax. So pretty much you're going to be pennying a bunch. Um, crushing Hammer, if you run that, to, to get rid of their fires is nice. And it's going to come down to Chiyu and attacking with that. Also, don't overextend too much, though, and keep in mind Iona might come in clutch. Uh, yeah, the, the, the mirror can be interesting, but it can also be terrible. <laughs> um, so if we got ourselves Ancient Box, I, I don't think this deck's very good. I've said that before. Um, tips, I guess Fluttermane, as if Fluttermane can't get trapped. I mean, just pretty much everything but Raiding Greninja. Uh, also, Great Tusk. Great Tusk. And we'll talk about Great Tusk Bill now. Um, so in terms of, like, not, if you're going in with Warren Moon and Kuridon, I mean, just attack... Don't like try not to deck yourself out. Just attack for whatever damage you can. And don't just go, don't go crazy. Just do whatever you can. Um, and like probably don't ever play Awakening Drum because you don't really need those cards. Um, yeah, just attack. It's pretty straightforward, but it's also bad. I don't think it'll end well. Um, if they ever get Raiding Greninja to play, so try to fill your bench with everything but Raiding Greninja. Specifically Fluttermane. Fluttermane's so easy, you can just retreat it. I guess you don't have a ton of energy recovery either, but you can always retreat Fluttermane for one energy, because um, uh, Fluttering Mid or Midnight Fluttering will turn off Block Snorlax's ability. So that's nice. Um, great test is good, I guess, but um, don't deck yourself out with Explorer's Guidance. That will be bad. Also keep in mind, Explorer's Guidance, or certain cards are currently glitched, so uh, yeah. Um, or they were glitched uh, a few days ago. And, um, oh, don't attach, like, fighting energies in places where you don't want fighting energies. Make sure you can attack with all your guys. Yeah, it's probably gonna... Your, your opponent's probably gonna gust all your different Pokemon, and then just gonna lose eventually. But, um, you can hope. Uh, maybe I'm a bit pessimistic. Anyways, uh, lastly, we have Great Tusk. Uh, and with Great Tusk, all you want to do is... Uh, mill. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Don't play Radiant Green Ninja. That's, that's bad. And don't play Pidgeot. Or if you play Pidgeot, just send it back into the deck immediately. Hand Trimmer? Oh yeah, I've got Let's run Hand Trimmer. Hand Trimmer is so good against Control, because your opponent's probably going to have like a 20 card hand or bigger, right? Um, Do it as late as you can, but also keep in mind they're probably just going to area you, so maybe you can do it if they have like a 15 card hand. I wouldn't do it at 10, probably. Um, yeah, don't uh, Giant. 
task as i said when sometimes when people see control and they're playing like some controller mill or solid deck they just start attacking like don't do that obviously if you wouldn't do it in a regular game with like control don't do it now um yeah pretty straightforward just just land collapse you kind of hope you need to get a little lucky and in don't raid a greninja or pidgeot v um yeah you can't really discard it but it's better to discard it probably than uh even in play. Oh, and in tax, of course, always that uh, the good old fashioned card that I forgot. Um, uh, Terra Scenario, right? Terra Scenario and Team Yells Cheer. So, long story short, play Team Yells Cheer and Professor Terra Scenario if you want to not lose to control. That will essentially always work. Um, but also, like, you know, there are lots of things. Certain matchups are better and worse and all that good stuff. Um, and don't bench Pokemon. <laughs> so, the three tips to play those cards don't bench Pokemon that you can't attack with. And, um, don't go don't go crazy like don't like do stupid plays um anyway that's all for today's video i hope that helps obviously it's not like a complete tutorial every match is different so keep that in mind but you know don't overthink it too much either but i hope you enjoyed and as always and we said see you in the next video